A comment I often get is that I should reinforce my mortars and tenon joints by putting dowels across them. Something like this where you have dowels going through the wood and the tenon inside the wood. But if this is proportioned properly, the tenon typically fails by breaking off and having a dowel right here just means it's easier for it to break off like this. So I finally decided to actually test this and I made a whole lot of bridle joints with my quickset tenon jig. The nice thing about that is I can cut the uh, bridle part just by moving the thing back and forth so I don't have to worry about how to cut out the middle part. And then I put reinforcing dowel pins in some of the joints and I varied the pattern. Some of them are like this and some like this and a whole bunch without as a control. And I'm going to use my joint strength testing setup except without this frame part. The test piece is going to be clamped against this post like this. There's a gap behind the joint itself to not give that any support. This bar here keeps it from sliding up without giving it lateral support. As this screw jack may not be able to press hard enough to break it with just this much leverage. So it's better if it was further away like this. And so I made this extension piece that I can clamp to my work pieces to get the right amount of leverage. I added some more clamps here, these ones too, and also this blue rope to keep it from falling if it snaps. So far just uh, 50 kilograms. And it's opening up a tiny bit here. Oh, that's it. Broke. It looks like the actual glue failed here. Yeah, I can pull this out. It looks like there's no glue on this part at all, as if I scraped off all the glue when I pushed them together. Either that or I forgot to put glue on this side. Alright, joint number two. 60 kilograms. 70. And another glue failure, and again it looks like I didn't have glue on everything. That second one, just like the first one, totally failed on the glue. So it's only been 24 hours since I glued those together. I think I need to give those a little bit more time. And fortunately I had five unpinned samples, so I've got three that I haven't busted yet. 70. Yet another glue failure. So I wasn't careful enough selecting the wood, and this one failed in the wood. And there you go, there. So my control samples have all been consistently failing with the glue, which is a surprise to me because with this ratio of tenon, I usually end up getting the wood failing. I'm thinking maybe it was too cold when I glued them. It was 13 degrees down here in the basement, that's about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And looking at the glue I used, it says use above 15 degrees Celsius or 59 Fahrenheit. I always thought that as long as the glue doesn't end up looking chalky like this, that'd be okay, but I might be wrong on that. But if the failure is all in the glue, then reinforcing dowels like this will actually help. 60. Okay, so that has kind of failed, but it's not come out yet because there's a dowel in here. And once again, mostly a glue failure except for this dowel down here. And maximum force was 65 kilograms, which is in line with the other ones, not one of the stronger ones. 72, 75. Oh, that one's still st stuck pretty good in there. And once again, it failed on the bottom one, hinging on the top one, just like the other one. 70. 73. Same as the other ones. My next three samples have the pins here and here as opposed to more of a miter type configuration and I think this orientation might be more optimal. 70. Oh, it's definitely yielding now. Up there. And I think that's failing. I think the glue has failed and now it's just holding on by the dowels. It's moving in there so it's just the dowels that are still holding it and those are not as strong as the glue itself. And there the uh, wood failed around the dowels like that. I also made some test pieces out of somewhat thicker material. Let's see how those do. 
was 100 kilograms. There is a glue joint failure right there, but only partial. Mostly a glue failure. And that's a glue failure now, and now we're just pulling on the pins. So we're seeing the wood coming apart right there so that pin doesn't pull anymore. And on the back, you can see this crack that's formed. And here's my results, numbers, bar graph. The first two were broken after one day, and then for the rest of them I had two days, so the extra glue drying time didn't make a difference. These are with the dowels in the miter orientation and in the bevel orientation. And again, you can't really say that these are stronger or weaker. Looking at the yield curve, the force keeps going up until crack, the glue breaks, and then as I continue, the dowels become more into their own until the wood around them breaks. Now the thicker samples all fail from the glue. Not sure what happened here. Possibly the dowels in the bevel orientation made it a bit stronger, or at least those ones seem to be a bit stronger than the other ones. Overall, the force on these was higher, even though the glue area was the same as these ones, and they all failed from the glue. So I may have glued these samples together too cold, so I cut 12 more joints and glued them together in the kitchen where it's about 10 degrees Celsius warmer. Glue failed. I tried to pick pieces of wood that were the same density as in my previous test, but this vertical piece, that was a bit lighter. And for half the samples, uh, that just tore apart. But uh, even for the ones where it was strictly a glue failure, like I have here, the forces were about the same as I had in my previous test. I still think if I did this experiment enough times, I could show that a pin through the tenon can cause the tenon to break sooner just because the grain is interrupted. Like this one here, it's the only sample where I could positively say that the dowel contributed to the failure of the joint. And that one was one of the weaker failures, but with all the other tests I've done, the dowels didn't seem to weaken the joints, uh, didn't strengthen them either. The one thing about putting dowels in though is if the glue does fail, at least there's still something holding it together. Though personally, I'd rather be able to pull the joint apart at this point so I can re-glue it properly. And before you tell me that I should test glues, yes, I will be doing some tests of different types of glue soon.